Okay, good morning po sa inyong lahat mga kapatid sa Panginoon. Again, we are here at our uh, uh, continuation of the book of Romans. As we study the book of Romans from chapter 1 up to, ch up to chapter 5, we have uh, learned that um, this establishes a fact that uh, Paul is uh, telling us what kind of salvation we have in the New Testament. So, tandaan po natin, Romans is after the transition period from Old Testament to the New Testament. Okay, so from Israel to church, from Old, Pro Old Testament prophecy to the intermission, which is uh, the teaching of the mysteries in the body of Christ, from uh, the shedding of blood of animals in the Old Testament to Christ's blood, the final atonement. No, So this is... Uh, the time we're in, um, after the transition of, uh, in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit is not uh, permanently indwelling, but in the New Testament, the Holy Spirit is uh, permanently indwelling. So in the New Testament, we have studied that uh, uh, in the New Testament, we have two nature of the believer. We have the new birth in the New Testament. So, ito pong uh, Romans, I establish a fact that um, the New Testament doctrines of salvation is different from the Old Testament. No? Old Testament is by works, by the law, while in the New Testament it is, it is an imputed righteousness. No? As is stated in the book of Romans chapter 4, alright? So in the Old Testament, walang eternal security. In the New Testament, we have eternal security. Okay, so uh, in the in the Old Testament, eternal security is not discussed, but in the New Testament, the body of Christ is discussed, the rapture is discussed, uh, the regeneration, the justification by faith is discussed. So there is a big difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament. No, so if you believe that salvation in the Old Testament and and salvation in the New Testament is the same. So, meron pong kakulangan po ng pag-aaral sa Biblia kapag ka po ganun. So, we have to study the Bible. So, we are now in the book of Romans chapter 10. So, gusto ko pong balikan po sana from chapter 1 to chapter 9. But, uh, it is your part to study it once again by reviewing our videos, no past videos. So, we are now in chapter 10. No? So, bago po yun, ay tayo po ay manalangin muna. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, once again we thank you Lord God for giving us another opportunity to study your words. Lord God, salamat po sa umagang ito for giving us a health, a, uh, an opportunity to preach your word. God, a good health in our body. And uh, salamat po Panginoong Diyos that we have a chance once again to uh, minister to our fellow brethren through this uh, kind of uh, set up. Lord, tulungan niyo po kami because we cannot do this without your help. In Jesus' name, Amen, Amen. Okay, good morning po muli. So we are now in chapter number 10. Okay, I'm excited to teach this. Uh, kahapon po, wala po tayong Bible study since uh, nagkaroon po ng um, morning service, afternoon service. So medyo busy po, no? And then the evening, nagkaroon po tayo ng Bible study also about the King James Bible. Pero ngayon po, ngayong umaga, Magkakaroon po tayo ng study in the book of Romans. Okay, chapter 10. Let's go to verse number 1. Okay, let's dig in. Okay. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. So this is under the theme, salvation under the law is not like salvation under grace. Ulitin po natin, salvation under the law is not like salvation under grace. Okay. So, sino po yung good example nito uh, ng salvation under the law is not like salvation under grace. Who is the good example here? Israel. Israel is a good example because according to verse 1 up to verse number 5, okay, merong ignorance sa part ng Israel. They have the seal of God but they are ignorant of the knowledge of the New Testament doctrine of salvation. Look at verse number 1. Brethren, my heart's desire. The brethren here are believers. Okay? Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel, yung nation Israel, kung saan po kabilang si Paul. Alright? Bloodline po niya yun, Okay? Alright. My heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. 
It means that they are not saved. Hindi po sila ligtas. Under this dispensation of grace, Israel is not saved. So, ang ang topic pala sa chapter 10 is salvation. No? Salvation na it is by grace. Verse number 1 to verse number 5. We're going to see that. So, ang Israel, in this time, they are not saved. Why? Ito, ito pong re reason. Verse 2. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God but not according to knowledge. So that is the problem. They have the seal of God. They are fanatic people of their religion. They know the Old Testament. They receive the, the oracles of God. They have the service of God. Kasi po, alam po natin na binigay po sa kanilang service sa tabernacle. They have the covenants, but the problem is that they are not saved in our dispensation, okay, in our time. Why? Because according to the Bible, they have the seal of God, but not according to knowledge. So salvation is what? Knowledge. Hindi ka pwedeng tumanggap sa Panginoon nang hindi mo alam kung ano yung tinatanggap mo. You have to have a knowledge. That's the reason why we have a Bible study. That's the reason why tinuturo natin yung difference between the Old Testament and New Testament. Why? Because you cannot be saved without the knowledge of the truth. Tandaan po natin yan. Ha? Okay, verse number 3. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. So we, we can see that there are uh, two righteousness, alright, in our time. One is man's righteousness, yung tinatawag ng Bible, own righteousness. The other one is what? God's righteousness. So the problem with Israel is that they are they are uh, trusting their own righteousness. And, it, and that is because that is the old way, no? That's the old way. Uh, according to the Bible in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 25. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 25. Okay? Ito yung paraan ng Diyos para isave ang Israel noong unang panahon sa Old Testament. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 25. It shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as he had commanded us. So they have uh, they have learned in the in the past, in the Old Testament, that they are going to be righteous in the sight of God by doing good works. Okay, so in the Old Testament, it is doing, it is observing, it, it is doing what God said. Alright? So, yun po ang kanilang righteousness. But in the New Testament, it is not their righteousness or our righteousness that is valuable in salvation. What is valuable in our salvation now is God's righteousness. That's the reason why Jesus Christ came in this world. Siya ang magbibigay ng righteousness na kailangan natin para tayo masave. Ang tawag po dito, God's righteousness. Okay, now, for they being ignorant, so they are ignorant. According to Romans 11.25, they are ignorant. Ano pa? Saan pa sila ignorant? Ignorant sila because they rejected Christ. Right? So, wisdom is when you accept it, when you accept Christ, that's wisdom. Bakit po? Because even Israel, they are zealous, they are fanatic, they have the, the oracles of God, they have the covenant, they are in the commonwealth of Israel. Uh, sabi natin, they have the service of God. Oh, meron, silang, meron silang temple, meron silang tabernacle. But listen to this. In the New Testament, sabi ng Bible, so verse 25, Romans 11, 25, For I would not pretend that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceits that, conceits that blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles will come in. Anong blindness po yun? They rejected their Messiah and as well as they don't understand what is the dispensation of grace. Yun ang po ang problema. They have the apostle, alright, that is Paul. We have also the apostle, that is Paul. And Paul preached to Israel that salvation in our time is by faith of Christ, okay? It is the faith of Christ. Sa Old Testament, it is their faith, okay? So, ibig sabihin, they have to be faithful, they have to observe the law, they have to do good works to be saved. But in our time, it is an imputation of righteousness, it is an imputation of the faith of Christ, alright? When we accepted Christ, our Lord and Savior, believe on Him, God's righteousness was imputed to us, so, anong righteousness meron tayo ngayon? 
so we can be delivered from the wrath to come. It is God's righteousness. Anong faith meron tayo ngayon? It is the faith of Jesus Christ. Galatians 2 verse number 16. Okay, kaya nga sabi ng Bible, that just shall live by faith in Romans 1.17. I-compare po natin sa pinagkuhanan ni Paul sa Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4. Nakalagay po sa Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4, that just shall live by His faith. Romans 1.17, nung kinote po niya ito, idalis po niya yung word na His, that just shall live by faith. Why? Because in the New Testament, salvation is by the faith of Christ. Salvation in the Old Testament, it is by faith of the person involved. Kaya nga po sa Old Testament, faith, faith plus works. In the New Testament, faith alone. You see that? Okay, now, so what's the problem with Israel? The Bible said, for they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. That is the problem. They have not submitted. Kaya sabi nga ng Bible sa so verse 21, but to Israel, he said, all day long, I have stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. Disobedient. Saan sila disobedient? Disobedient po sila sa program ng Diyos na ang righteousness, right sa ating panahon, is God's righteousness. To be saved. Para ikaw ay maligtas, you need the righteousness of God. And righteousness of God is that, remember that Jesus Christ died on the cross. Amen. He finished everything. What we need, He finished everything. Righteousness, ibig sabihin, that is His record. Okay? Record of His accomplishment. And then record of a sinless record. At ibibigay niya sa atin yun as a gift. What a blessing. That's the reason why salvation in our time is grace. Somebody did, okay, the works for us. Sa Old Testament, somebody should do and keep on doing it to be saved. Ngayon, somebody did the work and he finished it and he gave it to us free. And we accepted that by believing Christ as our Lord and Savior. Okay? So that's the problem of Israel. Sabi ng Bible sa verse 4, For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believe it. So Christ is the end of the law. Si Kristo ang wakas ng kautusan. Bakit sa wakas ng kautusan? Sapagat sa Old Testament, ang salvation is law by works, but in the New Testament, it is Christ. Christ is, okay, has everything. Complete yun eh. Pag tinagap mo si Christ, complete yun. You have the righteousness of God and you have His faith. Okay, complete yun. So how can you lose your salvation if you have God's righteousness? Meron pa bang mas tataas sa righteousness ng Diyos? Meron pa bang mas tataas sa faith ni Kristo? Wala na po. That's the reason why we have eternal security in the New Testament. Which in the Old Testament, wala po yun. Amen? Hopefully, it will be, it is clear to you. So, this is a dispensational salvation. Okay. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believe it. For Moses, okay, he's now talking about the Old Testament. For Moses described it, the righteousness which is of the law. That is in Deuteronomy 6.25. That man which doeth those things shall live by them. So, quoted po yan in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 11 hanggang verse 16. That is the salvation in the law. Okay? Now, kaya nga po itutuloy po natin, this is New Testament salvation is the opposite of the Mosaic law. Verse number 6 to verse number 4, 13. Sabi niya, okay? But the righteousness which is of faith, so he's now talking about salvation in our time. Sal righteousness which is of faith, speak it on this wise, say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above. Or who shall descend into the deep, that is to bring up Christ again from the dead. But what saith it? Okay, now he is now referring to the Old Testament. Paul is using the Old Testament to describe the New Testament. Okay? So in his spiritual application. Alright. Kaya nga po mami, explain ko po yung Romans 10.13. Kasi may mga dyan na mga hyper-dispensationalist po sa ating panahon sa Pilipinas na nagtuturo ang Romans chapter 10 verse 13 is a tribulational passage. I tell you, even this in verse number uh, verse number 8, galing po yung sa Old Testament. Bakit po niya kinot? He's using it as a spiritual application. Look at verse 8. But what said it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is the word of faith, 
which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart, that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with mouth confession is made unto salvation. Wala po ito sa Old Testament. Nang isang tao, magbibilib siya sa kanyang puso, sa, sa binuhay ng Diyos mula sa mga patay, at siya maliligtas. There is no doctrine in the Old Testament like that. So this is, this is a, a comparison of the Old Testament to the New Testament. Alright? Sabi ng Bible that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God that raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So wala po sa Old Testament yan. Walang confession. Okay? Wala po yung paniniwala sa puso. Okay? Na si Kristo ay binuhay ng Diyos mula sa mga patay. That is not being taught in the Old Testament. Pinipreach lang po yan sa ating panahon. Okay? That's the reason why it is, uh, uh, kung, kung, kung makita po natin, mga kapatid, dahil po may gumawa na sa kaligtasan, it is easier to be saved in this dispensation. It is easier. Why? Because tapos na eh. Naganap na. Sabi nga ni Jesus Christ sa John chapter 19 verse 30. Kaya nga po sa panahon natin ngayon, what you have to do, alright, is to believe. Bakit believe? Because it's done. Amen. It is done. Do you believe that uh, Christ can save you from eternal, eternal lake of fire? Amen. Without doing anything? Do, can you believe that? Can you believe that uh, we well, wala kang part sa salvation kundi tanggapin ang Panginoong Iso Kristo sa puso mo at maligtas ka? Wala kang part doon, mga kapatid. Hindi ka na magpapagod, hindi ka na magpapagal. Amen? What you have to do, accept the knowledge of the truth. Okay? Kaya nga po, ang repentance sa ating panahon, mga kapatid, iba yung repentance sa panahon nila. Ang repentance sa ating panahon is tanggapin yung katotohanan ito Alright? At hindi sa ating gawa ang kaligtasan. At tanggapin ang katotohan ng si Kristo ay sapat na ang kanyang ginawa sa krus para sa atin. Kasi nga ang, ang tiwala ng mga tao ay yung, kanyang, ay yung kanilang kayang gawin. Okay? Tandaan po natin, yun po kasi ang naiukit sa puso at isip ng mga tao sa lumang tipan. That they have to do something to get saved. Alright? And to be saved. But in the New Testament, it's different. Wala kang gagawin. It is purely by grace. It is purely by faith. And then what you have to do is to trust, to cling, to believe on what Christ had done on the cross of Calvary. Kaya nga po kakaiba. Sabi nga ng Bible, sa verse number 10, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Alright. So, balik po tayo doon sa verse number 8. Kasi meron po tayong medyo may sasagasaan tayo ng konti. Amen? Kasi po ito ay ginagamit. Ang teaching kasi ng mga Calvinists. Alright? Sila po magdadala ng faith sa tao. O, yan ang teaching ng Calvinists. So, ikaw wala kang faith. For example, ikaw wala ka, empty ka, wala kang faith. So, sa Calvinism, yung, yung faith ilalagay ng Diyos. Okay? And then kapag meron ka ng faith, then you're going to believe Christ. Alright? So, ibig sabihin, enable ka para ikaw ay tumanggap kay Kristo. Alright? So, yun po ang kanilang teaching. Pero, sabi sa verse 8, For what saith it, the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is the word of faith which we preach. Sipin mo, ha? Yung salita ng Diyos, ha? Ito'y sinasabi sa lahat ng tao sa buong mundo. Okay? Nasa kanila na ang ang salita ng Diyos Malapit sa kanilang bibig. Malapit sa kanilang puso. Okay? At uh, Calvin system is totally wrecked because the passage says that all of non-elect, non-elect, yung mga unsaved, could be saved since they have the word of faith so close to them that it is in their hearts and on the, lip, on the tips of their tongues. So, sa Calvinist system, Pwede lang mangyari yun doon sa mga taong elected. But here, it talks about non-elect. It talks about the unsafe people. Okay? Alright. Pero isipin ninyo, ha? Okay? Itong salvation na ito, inoper para sa lahat. It is not selected. It is not, hindi yung nag-elect ang Diyos ng mga taong maliligtas. Okay? That's a wrong notion. That's a wrong belief. Anyone who believes that, na may saved na before the foundation of the world. 
that is erroneous. Okay? Basically, they are not applying the right division. Second, they are not applying reason. Amen? Bakit namatay si Kristo para sa lahat? Kung ang kaligtasan pala ay para sa ilan lang. That is not reasonable. Amen? And not and also, Calvinism is not scriptural. Tandaan po natin. Amen? It is the theology na tinanggap ng ilang mga Baptist na ngayon ay tinuturo. Para sa ganoon, makontrol nila yung mga tao na kapag ka umalis sila sa church, eh hindi sila elected. Okay? So that's a controlling system, mga kapatid. Alam niyo po ba ng, ng mga, ang mga ang Bible, okay? Pag tinuro mo ito, para po sa personal mong interest, pwede mong ituro ito, kapatid, magturo ka ng mga doktrina para yung mga tao hindi aalis sa iyo. So, yung iba natatakot umalis sa church kahit alam nilang erroneous at palpak ang turo ng pastor kasi natatakot sila baka hindi daw sila elected. Sinaksak kasi sa isip ng ibang mga membro na kapag ka hindi ka nagpatuloy, hindi ka talaga ligtas. Okay, that's the problem. Amen? That's the problem. They don't know the Bible. Kaya nga po nandito po tayo, ituro ang Biblia para sa ganun yung mga taong niloko ng iba ay mapalaya sa kaisipan. Amen? The Bible said in John 8.32 It is the truth that make you free. Yung katotohanan na siya magpapalaya sa iyo. Amen? Okay. Look at this, verse 8. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. So parang inilapit na ng Diyos ang kanyang salita sa puso at sa, sa bibig ng tao. O anong gagawin ng tao? Andyan na eh. Andyan niya ang salita ng Diyos. Available na. Anong gagawin niya? That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God that raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Amen. Praise the Lord. Nandyan na yung salita ng Diyos eh. We can hear the word of God. We have the Bible. It is being preached. Nakita ko ang daming mga pastors ngayon, nagpipreach na sila sa, ng, sa streets, sa palengke, we are part of that, upang sa ganun ng salita ng Diyos, mailapit na sa bibig at sa puso ng tao. Upang sa ganun, kapag ka sila yung nag-decide, Amen? Anong gagawin nila? For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Amen? E di, tatanggapin nila sa puso nila at ipapahayag nila sa kanilang bibig. Bakit? Kasi ang salitan ng Diyos, inilapit na sa bibig ng tao eh. Inilapit na sa puso. Eh, anong gagawin mo? E di, tanggapin mo sa puso. Ipahayag mo sa yung bibig. Kaya nga po may panalangin. Amen? May prayer. Eh, yung iba dyan, di nga naniniwala doon sa tinatawag nilang sinner's prayer. Kapag ang sinner's prayer, walang laman. Amen? Walang kwenta yung sinner's prayer na yan. Pero kapag ang sinner's prayer... May laman tulad dito. Amen? Anong laman ang panalangin nila? Ang, kani, ang laman ng kanilang panalangin ay yung kaligtasan na ibinigay ni Kristo sa kanila. O ibinibigay at inaalok ng Kristo sa kanila. If, if salvation is clear in the mind of man and he accepted Christ as his Lord and Savior, is there a problem with that? And then he confessed that Jesus Christ is his Lord and Savior? And accepted Christ, Lord, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Lord, I am praying, Lord God, that uh, please save my soul, Lord. Please wash my sin through your blood. Lord, I'm opening my heart to you and I'm accepting you as my Lord and Savior. And if that man is praying that, that prayer, and we can call it a sinner's prayer, there is no problem with that. Ang problema na lang na mga tao ngayon na umatake sa sinner's prayer, yung utak nila, Yung utak nila na kapag nanalangin daw ang isang tao at tinanggap si Kristo sa so sinner's prayer, unsafe, I tell my friend, silang may problema, hindi po ang Bible. Because the Bible is clear na inilagay na ng Diyos, inilapit na ng Diyos sa pamagitan ng preaching ng Word of God, ang salita ng Panginoon sa bibig at sa puso ng tao. And Christ completed it as a gift, as a gift. Romans 6.20, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God. Anong gagawin mo sa regalo? E di tanggapin mo. Paano mapapasok yung isang regalo, kapatid? Ha? Isipin mo lang. Sabi ng iba, eh, kailangan lang isipin mo lang na ikaw ay ligtas. No, I tell you, that is not right. You have to believe, you have to accept it in your heart. Sabi nga ng Bible, the day star arise in your heart. You have to receive it. A heart na pinag-usapan dito. Eh. Puso. Pagkatapos, iaalis mo yung pag-receive kay Jesus Christ. Nasa Colossians chapter 2. Yan sabi ng Bible, as you have received there Jesus Christ the Lord, walk ye in Him. As you have therefore received Christ, Jesus the Lord, walk ye in Him. 
Tapos ayaw mong, ayaw mong paniwalaan yung receive. As a John 1.12, But as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his, uh, believe on his night. So yung mga umaatake sa sinas prayer na yan, yan yung mga taong hihilahin ka nila para maniwala ka na hindi ka talaga ligtas at kailangan mo talagang ayusin yung iyong paniniwala and then tuturuan ka nila so mawawala ka sa iyong membership sa church na kung saan naglilingkod ka at idad magdadoubt ka sa kaligtasan mo. Amen? O, oh, edi tatanggap ka na. Ay, kailangan ka na naman maliligtas. Edi hindi ka na born again noong ikaw itong mga kay Kristo. Ibig sabihin, hindi ka knowledgeable sa iyong ginagawa. Amen? Hindi mo pinagtiwala ng sarili mo. Wala ka bang tiwala sa sarili mo nang ikaw ay nanalangin at tinanggap po si Kristo. Hindi ka ba naniniwala na ikaw ay ligtas nung unang pan nung panahon na iyo? Look at verse 13. For there is no difference. Verse 11, For the scripture say it, Whosoever believe it on him, who, who shall not be ashamed. Now, wag tarong, kung naniwala ka, ligtas ka ba? Kung naniwala ka, ligtas ka? Pagka hindi ka naniwala sa salita ng Diyos, okay? Sabi nga ng, sabi nga ng isang preacher, dalawa lang yan. Kung ang isang tao naniwala kay Kristo, at according to the Bible, siya ligtas. Okay? Okay? Diyos ang nagsasalita. Pero kung isang tao naniwala kay Kristo at sinabi, hindi siya ligtas, kahit naniwala siya kay Kristo, Diablo ang nagsasalita doon. Okay? Devil ang nagsasalita. If you have trusted Christ in your heart, really, sincere, naniwala ka na talagang si Kristo ang tagapagligtas, you know it according to the Word of God, na hindi mo kayang iligtas ang iyong sarili, you put your faith on Him, I tell my friend, and you call upon the name of the Lord. You are saved according to the Bible. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon Him. Kailan mangyayari yung call? Ha? Kailan mangyayari yung call? Kailan mangyayari? How can you observe that? How can you do that? How can you observe that? If you're going to call. Paano katatawag? Ano gagawin mo? Pagkatatawag ka, di ba? Subukan mo kang tumawag, kapatid. Tumawag ka. Tumawag ka ng tulong. Anong gagawin mo? Disisikaw ka. Lord, help me. Di ba? Lord, save me. Paano mo gagawin yun? Di ba gagawin mo sa panalangin? Pawawa yung mga tao na yan. Amen. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon Him. Verse 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So yan po na naman. Sabi nila at Joel chapter 2 verse 29 yan. Alam nyo mga kapatid, if, if you're going to Joel chapter 2 verse 29, totoo po, yun ay tribulational passage. But remember that Paul used this Old Testament passages and put it scripture, uh, spiritually doon po sa New Testament. Okay? He is not applying the doctrinal uh, application of Joel chapter 2 here. Although quoted po sa Joel chapter 2 verse 29 to. But he is applying the spiritual application of what? Salvation by grace in our time. Amen. It is salvation by grace in our time. So, paano ka masisave? Sabi ng Bible, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. In verse 13, that is what causes a panic in hell and a celebration in heaven. God either told the truth or He didn't. If you call upon His name for salvation as found in verse 9 to 10, He saves you. If you called upon His name as found in the passage that He did not save you, then He lied. Nagsinungaling siya. So somebody is lying if you doubt your salvation after you have called upon His name, either you or Him, do you really have to guess which one? So you are saved because you call upon Him. Kailan ka na saved? You and you call upon Him. Sabi nga niya sa verse number 14, this is the remarks of Moses and Isaiah about gentle conversions. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in whom in, in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? That's the reason why tayo nagpipreach. Upang ang word of God, okay, malapit sa kanilang bibig at malapit sa kanilang puso. So hindi po totoo na yung mga, kasi may mga nakakusap akong mga uh, tao, sabi nila tinanggap po na si Kristo nung ako'y bata pa, hindi po totoo yun. You need to have a preacher 
The word of God should be nigh in your mouth and in your heart. Sabi ng Bible, How then shall they call on Him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in Him, in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? So the product of calling is the preaching of the word of God. The preaching. Kaya nga po, nagpipreach tayo eh. So that ang reaction ng tao is to call upon the name of the Lord. Upang siya po ay masave. Is that clear to you? Sabi sa verse 15, And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Alright? So this is, the, this is how Lord, the Lord will save the Gentiles. Alright? In our time. He used Isaiah, alright, and the remarks of Moses. Sabi sa verse 16, How they have, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah said, Lord, who hath believed our report. So then faith cometh by what? Hearing and hearing by the word of God. It is by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So faith cometh. Hindi po mangyayari ang faith na real and genuine, wala po ang word of God. Ephesians 1.13, I'm going to show you something in this verse, okay? Tignan po natin paano masayib ang isang tao, okay? Alright, so kung hindi mo pa alam kung paano ka maligtas, ito po yung uh, format, huh? okay? In whom ye also trusted, verse number 13, Ephesians 1.13, in whom also ye, all, ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that holy what? spirit of promise. See that? Bago nangyari yung sealing, ano munang nangyari? You heard the word of truth. The gospel. O, yun, yun yung specific ko doon. The gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed. When you heard the gospel, you believed. You trusted. And then after you trust, sabi ng Bible, hmm, ilagay ng Diyos ang kanyang Holy Spirit sa atin. Kaya nga po ang salvation ay ganito, okay? Meron kang narinig na preaching about Jesus Christ, about His finished work, yung kanyang ginawa sa cross, okay? And then nakita mo sa sarili mo na hindi, hindi sa'yo uh, ang kaligtasan, hindi sa pamamaraan mo. Yun ang sinasabi ng Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 and 9, hindi sa pamamaraan mo. So nakita mo sa pamamaraan ni Christ. So ang ginawa mo, parang yung sinabi ni Paul na, Ang righteousness niya, sinabi niya, parang dang yun. No? So, in niya yung kanyang righteousness as dang. So, ibig sabihin, that's repentance. You are trusting before your righteousness. Okay, this is your righteousness. Ito ang pinagtitiwalaan mo. Mabuti kang tao. Siguro, pumunta ko ng langit. O pumunta ko ng langit. Dahil mabuti ako at marami ang ginawa. Pero nung nakita mo si Christ, okay? Siya lamang magbibigay ng kaligtasan sa iyo at ikaw ay isang makasalanan. Then you turn around. Amen? That's repentance. And then, kinalimutan mo yon. Hindi mo na yun ang pinagtiwalaan mo and you, return, and you turn around and then you face Christ and accepted His gift of righteousness and then you trusted Him as your Lord and Savior na siya lamang at hindi sino man ang magliligtas sa iyong kaluluwa. Then you are saved. Yun ang sinasabi ng Bible. After you hear the gospel of truth, okay, yung salvation mo, then you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You trusted Him. And the Holy Spirit will dwell in your life. In your heart. So hopefully that's clear to you. Amen? Hopefully maliwanag po sa'yo. Kaya sabi na ba, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ang call, mga kapatid, dapat meron siyang, ano, meron siyang substance. Hindi yung tumatawag lang. Kasi kahit nakatuloy ko, tumatawag kay Kristo. Eh. Pero anong substance ng kanilang call? Anong laman ng kanilang call? Amen? Hindi po pwedeng yung balon, tapos alagyan mo ng faith. Amen? Eh, tusukin mo yun. Hangin lang lang laman nun. Tama? So, ang faith ng tao, sabi ng Bible, faith cometh by what? By hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So, we have a true and genuine faith. Kapag ang Word of God, nandun siya, kasama siya. Part siya ng faith. Amen? Yung Word of God, part siya ng faith. Hindi pwede sabihin mo, ako, eh, nung ako'y katuloy ko, niniwala din ako sa Diyos. Eh. Pero anong faith meron ako sa Diyos? Eh, hindi naman ito Reliable. Bakit? Kasi nga, wala namang Bible ng ako'y katolik ko. <laughs> Walang Biblia. Puro krus. Diyos, puro siyang. Ngayon, yun na lang. Palagi na lang ginagawa. Diba? Tiltil na lang sa sukat. Palaging ganun. Diba? Kulang na lang chicharon. So, ang problema, kapatid, empty 
ang ating mind. Empty ang ating heart. We are just blind follower. Blind follower lang tayo. Kaya nga po, inaatake yung sinner's prayer. Kasi nga, ang dami nagsisinner's prayer. Bakit? Kasi tanggap mo lang, tanggap ang tao. Kaya lang kasi, ang substance dapat nandoon, kapatid. Yung knowledge of truth nandoon. Yung faith dapat involve ang word of God. That's why the reason why when you accepted Christ as Lord and Savior, in your prayer, Amen? Accepted Christ in your prayer. Alam mo kung anong ipinapanalangin mo. Ano, alam mo kung sino tinatanggap mo. Alam mo kung sinong pinaniniwalaan mo. Amen? Hindi yung, ako naniwala kay Kristo. Ang tanong, ano paniwala mo kay Kristo? Ako, alam ko, ligtas ako. Eh, paano mo nalamang ligtas ka? Tama? Kaya nga po yun ang repentance. You're turning around. You're changing your mind. You are trusting forwardly. You're trusting your good works. And then now you are turning around and you're trusting the work of Christ. The finished work of Christ. Okay, now, tuloy po natin. Verse 16. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah said, Lord, who hath believed our report. Now, he's telling about Isaiah 53. Okay? Now, that's the Old Testament. So, ginagamit ni Paul yung Old Testament. Nilalagay sa New, sa New Testament. Kaya nga po, mali po yung mga, ano, yung mga nagtuturo na Romans 10.13 eh. Tribulational passage. Tribunal passage, yung pinagkuhanan. Pero, yung application, hindi tribulational passage. Hindi tribulational doctrine. Okay? Nako, ano ba naman yan? Okay, verse 17. So, then, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Verse number 18. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily, their sound went into all the earth, and their words unto the end of the earth. Dalawa po. Isang may paa, isang walang paa. Merong nagpipreach, okay, using their feet. Sabi ng Bible, di ba? They preach the, gas, the gospel of glad tidings. Pero yung isa po dito, and their words unto the ends of the earth. Merong nangangaral na walang paa. Okay? Alam niyo po ba, mga kapatid, sa Bible, alright? Okay? Amazing, no? Tignan natin sa Psalms chapter 19. Amazing po ito. Sabi ng Bible, yung speech nila. Kaya ako naniniwala talagang ito, prophetic talaga ito, no? Uh, nung nakita ko ito, sabi ko ba, merong mga nangangaral na may paa, nangangaral na wala namang paa. Okay? Look at Psalms 19. Okay? 19. Look at verse 4. Uh, Psalms 19. Uh, Psalms uh, 19. Okay, mali. And the heavens declare the glory of God that from its truth is on the word. Verse 2. Day unto day, utter its speech, and night unto night, show it knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Where their voice is not heard. Sabi ng Bible. Ano yung voice na yon? Na hindi. Ev sabi ng Bible. Day and unto day, utter its speech, and night unto night, show it knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Ano yun? Diba? Every morning, mga kapatid, may pinakikita dyan. Anong binabanggit po? Pansinin nyo, yun ang sun. Yung araw yun, sun. Sun is a picture of what? Isang, isang uh, sunrise, right? Okay, that's resurrection. Tapos yung sunset, that is the death of Christ. Kaya kita mo, yung, yung araw pula kapag ka lumulubog, right? That is the 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 death of Christ kapag bumabangon siya it's a sunrise that is resurrection that is the picture of the gospel being proclaimed by the creation by the creation kaya hindi mo naman maintindihan kung wala kang wala kang bible alright so yung bible magsasabi ah yung pala yun pala picture ng resurrection okay picture pala ng death ni Christ and resurrection now so that is yun ang preacher ng gospel mga kapatid Somebody said to me that uh, kung hindi natin hindi tayo magpipreach, magpipreach ang vulkan. <laughs> so they have uh, this creation, they are uttering speech. Every day, every day, sinasabi nila, you have to be saved and Jesus Christ is the salvation. But how could you understand that without the Bible? Okay? So complementary po ang Bible sa conscience at complementary po ang Bible sa, sa creation. Look at Romans chapter 1. I'm going to show you something here. Romans chapter 1. How can you understand this? Okay? Na kung wala ang Bible sa'yo, how can you understand this? Romans chapter 1. Look at this one. Romans chapter 1. Okay? Look at this one. For verse 20. For the invisible things of Him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even His eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Isipin mo yung Godhead, ipinaliwanag ng creation. Ano yung Godhead? Yun na Trinity. 
Paano ipinaliwanag ng creation ang Trinity, ang Trinity, ang Godhead? Sabi niya, at saka yung mga invisible things, at saka yung visible things. Na, nalaman natin may invisible because, because of the visible things. Paano maintindihan yun? Without the scripture. So the creation complements the scripture. Naintindihan natin, the conscience also, na clear conscience, complements the scripture. Sabi ng Bible, it is the law written in their hearts. Okay, hopefully you understand that. Amen. Naintindihan po natin sana. So in Romans chapter 10, okay, Romans chapter 10, balik po tayo sa verse, But I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily, their sound went into all the earth, and their words unto the ends of the world. Okay, verse 19, But I say, did not Israel know? First Moses saith, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are that are no people and by a foolish nation I will anger you. So si Moses ang nagsasalita. Kanina si Isaiah. Si Isaiah sinabi niya kung paano ipipreach ang gospel para sa mga tao. Okay? Yung report niya para sa mga tao. Yung salvation para sa tao. Si Moses sinabi naman niya kung anong klase heart meron ng tao magre-reject kay Christ. Sabi ng Bible, but I say, did not Israel know? O yun, Israel may problema. They rejected Christ. First Moses said, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people, and by a people, nation, Polish nation, I will anger you. But Isaiah is very bold and said, I was, I was found of them that sought me not. I was made manifest unto them that asked not after me. So sinasabi niya, yung Israel, reject yung righteousness ng Diyos, Pero yung Gentile, na walang kilalang Diyos dati, na walang oracles ng Diyos, hindi nila kilala si Jehovah, hindi nila kilala yung Lord, hindi nila kilala yung totoong Panginoon. Okay? Wala silang mga miracles sa nakita. Sila yung mga uncircumcised, and yet sila yung naniwala. Samantalang yung Israel, kung saan lumabas si Kristo, sila pa yung nag-reject. Pero yung Gentile, sila pa yung tumanggap. See? You see that? Okay? So sabi ng Bible sa verse 21, But to Israel... He saith, all day long I have stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. Kaya nga po ang gospel, basanin ninyo, Romans 1, 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. To the Jew first. Ibig sabihin, ipinangaral sa mga Hudyo muna. Pero, later on, napunta ang majority sa mga nasaved sa Gentile. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. That is the picture of the Gentile people. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. So, ang salvation po ngayon ay para sa Hudyo at para sa Hintil. At ang salvation sa ating panahon is faith in the finished work of Christ. Amen? Hindi po yung ating ginagawa ang magliligtas sa atin, kundi yung ginawa ni Kristo para sa atin. At kung ikaw ay Hudyo, you have to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. And if you're a Gentile and saved, hindi ka ligtas, right this moment, mga kapatid, pwede kang dapuan ng sakit at ikaw ay mamatay, punta ka ng impyerno. Pero huwag sanang mangyari yon. Bago mangyari na ikaw ay datna ng kamatayan, Christ is the Savior. Siya ang tagapagligtas. It is not your Mama Mary, it is not your beloved church, it is not where you are organized, or you are baptized, it is not the saints that you call that will save you. It is not the crucifixion that you do every Lenten season. It is not the sacrifice that you do every time na may mahal na araw. It is not being a faithful member of a church. It is purely by grace. It means no works involved because Christ had done everything. So he made it free. Sabi ng Bible, for by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not of works. Let's any man should bow. So hopefully it's clear to you. This is Romans chapter 10. Amen. At uh, marami po po tayong gustong, uh, gusto ko pang uh, ipakita po sa inyo. Pero so since uh, every every chapter is, is really bulky. Kaya lang po, kinukuha po na, kinukonsize natin yung upang sa ganun maintindihan po ng madlang people. Okay? So, salamat po sa inyong lahat. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being with me. And, and hopefully that you will continue studying the book of Romans. Kung hindi po nyo masyado pang naintindihan, please go back to the old, to other videos. 
hanggang sa makarating kayo sa Romans chapter 10. Amen? So, I want you to know the Bible and be established in your faith. Para po yung mga nanluloko dyan sa paligid ay hindi po tayo may sama. Sa kanilang panluloko, ay later on, manluloko din pala tayo. Okay? So, hopefully, that our heart will be full of sincerity in looking and finding for the truth. Salamat po sa Diyos sapagat may ganito pong pamamaraan para po ipangaral ang kanyang salita. Okay? Magandang magandang uh, umaga po sa inyong lahat. God bless po. Tayo po'y manalangin na kilang Diyos. Salamat po sa iyong salita, Panginoon. Pagpalain niyo po kami, O Diyos, at pangunahan. Thank you, Lord, for everything you have done in our lives, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so, uh, bati lang po ako ng konti, Brother Kevin, Sister Nancy. Amen. Brother Richie, Brother Rick Likopit, uh, Romel, Brother, Sister Ope, Amen, Sister Joanna, Taan Tolentino, Sister Risa, Brother Edgardo Patag, Brother Ronald Benjola, Kumusta ka Brad? Brother Javis, Sister Saliana sa Hong Kong, Good morning po, Sister Rainy, Safinel, uh, Father Penn Castell, Brother Nolan, okay? Nag-comment pa si Brother Nolan, okay? Brother Victor Sumilang, Janet Mendoza Briones, Edgardo Patag, amen. Lionel Yap Bayato Jr. is watching. Franz Saline Evalde, amen. Bal Morales de Ocampo, uh, Sister uh, J. Castro Catugas, Vincent San Vicente, Sister Willani Licopit, Amen. Sister Sansu Susan. Yeah. Kini de la Torre. Brother Mike Abeto. Rudy Abrot. Sister Aida Austria sa Singapore. Amen. Mark Takulo sa Sorsogon. Tita Noy sa Pampanga. Sweet Pampanga. Okay. Brother Eric sa Manila. Torbic Diaz. Dino Bravo. Sister Lerma. Arnold M.G., Rema Joy, Presto, ang dami po, no? Daming nanonood sa atin. Okay, Sister Leia Solis Rec Recla. Kumusta po kayo, Sister Leia? Okay, so God bless your family. Taba po, ay lalo po pa tayong, you know, lumakas sa pananampalataya sa ating Panginoon. Okay, God is good all the time, all the time. God is good. Amen.